gonna slip a jig in there. Ah, oh, bad flip. That's a bass. Oh, yep. Got him. Nice. Got him. Holy cow. Holy cow. Big it. 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 Get him. Get him in. Get him in. So I got this comment a while ago on YouTube and I feel like it needs to be addressed. John underscore Ray says, do you think it's a waste of time to take the boat out on a big lake and go fishing without a live scope system? And man, that's tough to read. Fish finder technology has become so advanced that we've gotten to the point where some anglers feel like if they can't keep up with the guys scoping out there for big ones, then it's not even worth going out at all. And that is a sad predicament. Because despite all the giant bass guys are catching using forward facing sonar, the bass in our lakes haven't changed one bit in the last century. The same techniques that have always worked still do. When many anglers watch YouTube videos and watch live tournament coverage and see all the guys live scoping, they think to themselves, and obviously by this commenter, they think, man, is it even worth going out on the water without live scope? And let me tell you, it absolutely is. So for this fishing day, I have my forward facing sonar, my live scope turned completely off to prove that you can still catch fish the old fashioned way. And with every fish I catch, I'm gonna explain how you can also catch fish not using forward facing sonar during every month of the year. Now, one thing we're doing, y'all, is we're doing, I mean, not just no live scope, we're doing no sonar at all. So if you ain't got no fish finders, then this is a video for you because, uh, you know, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna turn it on for a second. I wanna know water temperature. I actually fully turned it off. I didn't just turn the screen off. 63.8. And so that means that these fish are end of pre-spawn. I mean, it's been like low 60s for a while. So end of pre-spawn, full-blown spawn. We have winds light and variable. It's the time of the year that you can just catch them wind in a swim bait, throw in a Texas rig. If you got a little bit of wind, maybe a, uh, a buzz bait and a swim jig. So that's what we're gonna do today. And like I said, we're gonna talk to you guys about some of the ways that when it's not springtime, how you can catch them, both on and off the bank without forward facing, because trust me, fish are still there. You can still have a good time. And if I don't catch one on this swim bait today, you're gonna see some catches from this swim bait on a different day, because it's too cool. First one that bites, I'm swinging. Come on now, it's been long enough without a bite. I like a frog too much, it's a, it's a problem. Oh, a little, a little guy. Could be a female around here somewhere. We caught one folks, and we weren't even looking at him, were we? We're blind scoping. Oh, I got a feeling. Can you get my spinnerbait out of the rod box? Pulling out the spinnerbait, cause I've got a feeling. Woohoo! That the blade's gonna get munched. Gosh! I watched him. I watched him come out of the uh, the, the grass for it. Cool. Not even a big one, just mouth open. Whoa! Ugh, he is ugly. My goodness! And I didn't even get him. I didn't even get him like inside the mouth. Look, he's on the outside. But I I, I saw him wake outside of that uh, that hay grass there. All right, absolutely ugly fish. A, Dude, he, he's spawning upside down. He's got a red mark. I'm joking, by the way. <laughs> Unless they can spawn upside down. I knew it. Adjustments, folks. Pull into a pocket, saw that it was a little bit windier because it's more main lake. And while a swim jig or a swim bait or flipping around might also have caught that fish, second cast, I got that because it has so much uh, commotion and I say commotion, vibration, sound, water displacement. And I didn't use the live scope cues of what I saw on the screen. I used the weather cues to decide what lure to throw and it resulted in a fish. So you can still catch them, especially in the springtime. You just gotta know what the wind's doing, what the sun's doing, how it positions fish. And uh, they're in the same places they've always been. Now, one thing that I think live scope has caused us to not do as anglers is pay close enough attention to how the weather is affecting our bodies of water. And the good thing is Bass Forecast can help you do that better. Bass Forecast is an awesome mobile app that I use and I'm actually a co-owner in. I have had a hand in designing this app and it is an algorithm based around how weather affects our bodies of water, specifically for bass. By simply putting in your GPS location, it will spit out a rating from one to 10 on how the bass should be acting on that day. Now that doesn't mean that on a two, you're not gonna catch any fish and on a 10, you're gonna absolutely blast them, but it's a good gauge of how the fish should be acting, like I said, based on current and past weather. On today's body of water, we have a 6.4. It says that it is a pre-spawn day. 
you know what, we're seeing that. We're, we're back in the marina right now. We're gonna see if there's fish up spawning, but the fish that we've caught so far have been in a pre-spawn pattern. That is correct. We have a very favorable water temperature trend and colder water. It is just now getting to 65 and it's 11 o'clock. So hopefully it gets warmer than that. But if you look, at the, the days in the future, that's a big thing Bass Forecast is known for, is helping you guys plan what days to go fishing. Today is the lowest day for a long time. 6.4, then 8.8, then 9.6, and then three straight 10.0 days in the row. And that's because we have a good weather trend going into a new moon. The fish should be pulling up to spawn. Matter of fact, if I click on Sunday, that's a 10, click on the, on the wheel, it says pre-spawn. And then the next day, it says spawn. So these fish buy what is it, Monday, should just be absolutely on the bank. If I scroll down, I can actually toggle between pre-spawn, spawn, and post-spawn, but I'm gonna stick to spawn here, and I'm gonna go to rock. And it looks like a shaky head, a topwater frog, and a craw tube. And if I go back to pre-spawn, we also have um, slow rolled spinnerbait is a, is a bait that I caught them on, and uh, soft plastic jerkbait stick bait is on that list as well. So all the lures that we have been catching them on are in there. And if you uh, are kind of struggling with what to throw, you're not sure what to do, Bass Forecast can be a good uh, help with both the lures and the locations. And like I said, I believe in the algorithm. I will have the app linked down below. But we're gonna, we're gonna get back here to the, the back of this marina and see if we can't catch us some spawners because I feel like with 65 degree water temperature, there should be a few that maybe the rest of the lake is still an end of the pre-spawn, but fish back here are hopefully a few days farther ahead. Oh baby, oh baby, small guy. We found one though, folks. Yeah! The worker is excited for us. That right there, Garrison, is what we come here for. Straight up, straight up giants. You ever heard of Bertha? Yeah, that's her. Now you may be watching this video and saying, Tyler, of course you can catch them without live scope in the spawn because they're all up shallow. Well, I'm gonna tell you over the next few catches how to catch them in the post-spawn, the summer, the fall, and even the winter without looking at the screen. That a bass? For sure. Gosh, for sure. He was swimming with it. Gosh, boy, I swear. There he is. You know what, not as small as I had expected. I expected a tiny little dink, but it's just a nice dink. Thank you, friend. And he got that cage fighter jig to the face. Had to make a bunch of repeated casts at him, but uh, we got him. So, like I said, I'm gonna kind of discuss all the different times of the year. So, even though we're in the spawn, I'm gonna talk about the post-spawn. When those fish move off beds, can you go out deep and live scope the earliest ones that get out there on, on brush piles and on, on creek channel swings, shaking a minnow, throwing a deep crankbait? Absolutely. But you can also get out there really early in the morning. I'm talking about like before the sun even gets up and you can spend some time fishing the shad spawn. So that is where either, either a thread fin or gizzard, whatever kind of shad you have in your body of water, they are going to be up against all the rocks and the seawalls and they are spawning. And there's a really fun topwater bite you can take advantage of early in the morning there. And as soon as that dies, you can then start moving off the bank to kind of let that, that first initial drop off or maybe a brush pile or a collection of laydowns. And you can use your traditional sonar or your side scan to find that mark away point and then fish it just like you always did. And if your body of water doesn't have a whole lot of bait fish, the bluegills also spawn at the back end of the bass spawn. So just like you're doing, cruising around, using your eyes to, uh, to eye scope to look for bass on beds, you can see big old expansive areas of bluegill beds, especially in clearer water, and the bass will be sitting on the edges of those, ambushing bluegills as they spawn. And so that can happen all throughout the day, no live scope needed. Come on now, brother. Gotta be a big one, a big one, a big one, Nito. Oh, yep. There we go. There we go. A nice one, a nice one. Not a big one. And you know what? He's skinny too. He's skinny too. Yo, dang it. Ah, yeah. Kind of bummed. I played him too long. That was that was on me. Should have flipped him a long time ago. I mean, like I was fishing that slow. Well, even though I didn't catch one there, I still want to talk about the post-spawn to summertime because that is especially where most guys start struggling to catch fish. Unless you get out there early morning, you fish a main lake point with a big walking bait or a grass flat with a walking bait or a plopper, that morning bite, once it passes, can lead to some incredibly tough 
afternoon fishing unless you know what you're doing out deep, which live scope, of course, can make very, very easy. You can actually line up your cast with the brush pile, with the ledge, and throw your football jig, your big worm, your deep crankbait. But if you don't have live scope, guess what? That is still possible. We did it for a long, long time by just side scanning, marking a waypoint, using down scan, traditional, and then you can even drop a marker buoy. I talked about it in my offshore masterclass. I will leave that video down in the video description, but there are still plenty of ways that you can line up your cast the old fashioned way. Again, you can't compare your success to somebody using live scope because it's easier to line up your cast, but is it still worth it? Absolutely. Putting time behind your fish finder, that's just a traditional fish finder, can still find you good fish in the summertime, but especially that early morning bite on top water is the most fun. Will this be the first one we don't catch one on? Nope. Nice one. Gosh, they are liking the jig. Oh! What is going on? Dude, he had that good too. My, my hook is strong, it just... <sighs> boo! Dang. Boo, 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 boo! That was right next to the trolling motor too. A tight line hooks at him. Would you like a jig? And that's every time I jig and Garrison puts on a jig. Let's talk about the uh, summer to late summer for non-scopers. Now, to be honest, this is probably the toughest time of the year really to catch fish in general called the dog days of summer, where those fish have been offshore for a long time. They've kind of eaten to their heart's desire and they are they are tired. The, uh, the water temperature is hot even down in the depths. Maybe the oxygen levels aren't super strong in your body of water. Maybe you're even having some, uh, some turbidity in the bottom of your water column. And so these fish are just not doing that well. And can live scope help here? It can, but honestly, I don't spend much time fishing during this time of the year. I'm fishing a ton early in the morning or maybe on some private lakes. But for the most part, I'm not spending a whole lot of time out in the water. In Texas, it's 107 degrees during this time anyways. But if you do want to fish during this time of the year, it is incredibly important to take advantage of that morning time bite because fish that live shallow, some of them live shallow all year long, they're still going to be up shallow. And so you can catch them early in the morning. And then once it, it becomes really, really hot outside, it's best to just drag around a big worm. I'm talking about 10, 12, 14 inches, the biggest worms you have, get them on a big Texas rig and drag them out deep. Even using live scope and side scan, I have a hard time locating where fish are this time of year. And so you kind of have to discover that on your body of water, but it's probably the toughest time of the year, at least in my opinion, to consistently catch fish. And speaking of catching fish, I got to land one of these. Is that one right there on the, on the point here? Is that, is that a shadow? That is a fish. Is he in a bed? Dude, that's a big fish. It's a bass, yeah. What the flip? Oh, no. No. Brother. I'm gonna flip a jig in there. Is that fish like sick? Oh, bad flip. That's a bass. Got him. Nice. Got him. Holy cow. Holy cow. Big in, 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 big in. Get him. Get him in. Get him in. Oh! <laughs> Holy oh, cow! My gosh! Whoa! What the? <laughs> Bro, that's like a freaking eight or nine pounder. Uh, he'll go like high seven, I think. He's kind of skinny. Look at this! Look at this! Oh my goodness! Giant! We, we're passing this point here on the, I mean, the, the most obvious point in this whole arena, and I see this shadow sitting on the point and I'm like is that a bass and he flips it doesn't move I flip one time in there and he's got the cage fighter jig absolutely down the mouth I mean like let me go chest mount angle here can y'all see that it's gone and you know what y'all this bass is blind in one eye look he's blind in that eye but he's good in that one and maybe the fact that it just had one eye caused it to be a little more susceptible to biting gosh yeah look at that holy smokes stick him in the live wheel just for a second to get a picture again we're not sure if he was on a bed or not his tail is not bloody. I want to talk about the uh, summer to fall transition for non-scopers, but just give me a second. You, you think there'd be a male? That's what I'm saying. If he was on a bed, but I'm not, not seeing any male. That makes me want to go down the bank and just look. Oh goodness. There's no, there's no bed. The jig is the ticky. The jiggy is the ticky all the time. I knew that was a bass. Okay. Tell by the outline. Well, I didn't know what could possibly cause that shadow. Well, like I told you guys. You gotta be aware of what's going on. I did not catch that fish, nor would I have caught that fish if I was out there scoping. That fish was up shallow, either on a bed or I think, we think it was just sunny. The fish had just moved up from the main lake. It was chilling there before it moves back into this pocket here. 
and that's crazy. We're gonna get a picture here in a second, but I wanna talk about real quick, the summer to fall transition. Again, the early morning is incredibly crucial to get out there. The frog bite picks up again. The, uh, the plopper bite is good. The walking bait bite is good. Not for very long though, until it gets really hot in the afternoon. Kind of same thing as dog days. But as soon as you start getting some cold fronts, immediately start heading towards kind of like the second half or the, the first half of pockets that are main lake pockets. A lot of those fish that are on the main lake in the summertime will push up and in ponds as well, uh, kind of like the first uh, points or, or pockets away from the deepest water. You want to start fishing those with reaction bait. So a square bill crankbait and a, and a vibrating jig and a spinner bait. And especially during this season, wind is your friend. Wind cools down the water and moves around the entire ecosystem and it gets those fish in a more bitey mood. Still one of the most challenging times of the year to fish when you could be out there scoping, maybe throwing a, a drop shot or a shaky head, but you can still catch them up shallow. The fall though is when the shallow bite really gets good again. And I feel like, you know, with catching that fish, this is probably a good time to say that if you are not a live scoper and you want to catch more fish shallow, having these things is so incredibly important to doing so. I mean, I wouldn't have caught that fish. Well, actually, that fish might have been so obvious that we, we could have seen her, but you know what? Maybe not. Might have missed that fish if there, we didn't have polarized sunglasses on. And are you seeing something? He thinks he just saw one swim off a of bed and for sure wouldn't have seen that fish right there. Actually, yeah, I see him right here. There he is. Yeah, there he is. That's another big one. We got we to spin back around and uh, see where he's coming from. Like spin far, farther away. And the company that I've trusted with my polarized sunglass needs for the last five, six years is Amphibia. They're an awesome company that got taken over by some good friends of mine. So I really trust where the company is headed. And you can use code, I think it's TRF20, or it'll be down here on the bottom of the screen. Get yourself a pair of polarized sunglasses and they float. I'd throw them in the water to show you, but we're bed fishing right now and I don't want to get them wet. See, you know where she is? She's looking south at it. She's in that top left corner underneath that stuff right there. Yeah. I don't know, but she'll, she'll come, back. come back. The fact that she's spun oh, yeah. means that she's catch. There she is, there she is. She's catchable, I'm not sure if we want to spend time on her. Oh, she's a fry her. That's why she's frantic and moving around. And that's why she's also not on a specific spot because she's wherever the, the fry are. There's one on a white spot. Get in here. Man, you got yellow eyes. He's got yellow eyes. That was fun. Little buck bass, little male. And as we get that bite, I'm gonna check lighting, see if we're good. Now when that fall time gets here, it is so fun to go out there and catch them on top water. If you have an overcast day in fall, I'm talking anywhere from top water to a, a 3XD. So a crankbait that dives, you know, 10, 12, 15 feet. It, it just so, such good ways to catch them where you don't have to have live scope. Now, using certain lures can help you understand your body of water better. So I like pointing live scope out there because I can tell where the drop-offs are, but if you drag around a jig or a heavier Texas rig or a shaky head or especially a crankbait, you can find out real quick how sloping the point you're fishing is, what the pocket you're fishing in looks like underneath the water. And of course, if you have your topographic maps on your fish finder, you can find that out a little bit easier, but there's even small intricacies that yes, you could find easier on live scope, but just doing it the old fashioned way, casting and feeling what's down there on the bottom, honestly kind of has its own reward to it. I think a close second place behind the springtime that we're fishing in right now uh, to catch fish without live scope is definitely the fall. Oh gosh, we got to spin around or just, or just get a flip in there. Oh no, your, your, your Cinco falls toward the boat. It's a nice one, dude. And I think they're fresh too. I'm just going to go ahead and put the, put the rod down and grab the net. He's currently looking towards us from the left side. See him? All right, we got to double, double trouble this guy now. Oh, 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 he flashed it. Yeah, he flashed it. Dude, he's, going, he's big. He's big. Oh, but he will not eat anything. I think he's like in a spawning mood. So he's not, he's not in the eating mood. Oh. oh, she ate it twice. And believe it or not, we could not get that big fish to bite and I've got stuff to do at home. So I've got to head out of here, but you know what I realized? We didn't talk about the winter time yet. And honestly, that's the time of the year that I think most people are, are more so upset about because of live scoping. Because for a long time, winter was a season that we had no clue where the fish went. We knew they weren't for the most part on the bank, especially in our big lakes and reservoirs. And so we thought, where do they go? And now we know they are chasing bait out there in the middle and the jig head minnow, the mid stroll, hover stroll, whatever you want to call it, that technique has taken over. And more than likely, John, who made that comment that we're addressing in this video, probably made that after seeing just so many pro anglers and, and YouTubers and fishing coverage across the board, 
catching them on one singular technique. And to be honest, it is quite monotonous, but we've discovered because of live scope that that technique is the best way to catch fish in the winter. Now, can you still catch them in the winter not using live scope? Absolutely. Alabama rigs, suspending jerk baits, and that same technique in the same areas you've always thrown it. So if you want to throw a small finesse, you know, soft plastic swim bait over the deep side of a point on a creek channel inside of a ditch, uh, maybe a deeper grass edge on a lake that has living aquatic vegetation, that stuff still works. And you can actually implement the new best technique ever shaking the minnow in those same exact locations and so again this is probably the season winter time where the comparison happens the most where you see guys catching like 40 50 pound limos on oh ivy and you're used to being 15 pounds for your best five is a good day well guess what that's still a good day. So don't let the one month to maybe two month time period discourage you from going out on the water when you see guys catching them on live scope because those fish are incredibly hard to target. It's not just see it on your graph, cast out there, he bites. You have to have incredible finesse. You have to have good casting accuracy, knowing which direction the fish is swimming. There's a whole lot more to it. And quite honestly, an easier way to catch fish in the winter time if you're not a live scope user is to just go down a, a steeper rock bank, fish points with an Alabama rig and a jerk bait, and you can catch fish during that time of the year as well. So that brings us full circle when it comes to catching bass without using live scope. Now I told you guys if I didn't catch one on this specific day on the big swim bait, I would show you an awesome catch using it. Here that is right now. Too much wind. Too much wind. Gosh. Oh, I got a big one though. I got a big one on the swim bait. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir on the back side of the point on the back side of the point let's go let's go yes sir oh my gosh on the line through swim bait yes just slow rolling this thing three and a half pounder they're biting folks they're just hard to get around i'm not gonna lie to you guys there is something special as a live scope user somebody who enjoys that of just going back to the basics chunking out a big swim bait slow rolling that thing and feeling the good old-fashioned thump that you didn't know was coming i miss that sometimes and the good news is i can probably completely shut off my live scope just like i did today over these next two to three months and have just as amazing days as if i was staring down at my screen now if you want to know some of the problems the pitfalls with live scope that actually makes it a lot more challenging than you may think i will leave that video up here in the corner and i'm about to drop a very detailed discussion on live scope as a whole covering both sides the anti and the pro and when that video is out it'll be up here in this corner my name is tyler hopefully you enjoyed this video and we'll see you guys next time right here on trf